running. That's right. Let's do it. Got some cool things. So what's cool about this live stream is that we can actually um, we can actually go through and cut the beginning, so it'll be a full length video after. Nice. Instead of like setting up. Mm -hmm. We trim the beginning and trim the ends, and it'll be a, a video that's on the channel. Awesome. So it's, a, it's inviting people now. We are live. What's going on, guys? Thank you for joining us live on the live today. I got my man, Medin. What's up, everybody? Medin. It's been a minute, bro. It's been a while. It's been a while. I haven't. I've been showing to the love to the YouTube YouTubers out there, but I'm happy to be back. We got a lot of work to do, man. It is. It is. I'm, I'm excited, guys. If you guys caught the Tuesday live stream that we had, we were discussing one brand, one strategy to change your brand. And in this video, we're diving into one strategy to make your brand last. So we're going to be talking about this in regards to strategy. What can you do within your business that will make your brand last? I get this question all the time. I want to make sure to answer it to you guys. Um, and then we also want to dive into some Q&A. So if you guys are coming on here live, please drop your questions in the comments below. But Dean, what kind of questions do you enjoy the most? I like when people are asking about what does my brand mean and how what should I name my brand and how do I get it going to where people want to buy from me? That kind of stuff is uh is definitely, as you know, kind of my forte. So if you got questions like that, fire away. Any kind is good, but yeah, I love yes, those. Guys, uh, you literally got somebody who I think is one of the greatest brand marketing strategists in the world. Thank you. Thank in you. The entire world. <laughs> No, honestly, honestly, he's, he's, he's incredible. He, uh, he helps a lot of brands get clarity. A lot of people get clarity in their own life, but also in their brand's life. What does your brand mean? What does it represent? How can you make an impact with it? And how can you share that to others so they quickly understand it? Yeah. And that's essentially what we're going to be covering throughout this live stream, guys. We're going to be with you guys for the next 30 or 40 minutes. So make the most of it. Drop your questions down below and uh, let's get started. So, yeah. um, Medin, um, when it comes to the one strategy to make a brand last mm -hmm. what's one thing that people can start with that they can start implementing and just getting that result started well it's kind of a combination of tactics but the strategy that i see is keeping it very simple and repetitive those are the two things that always go hand in hand that make people it stick because as i've said this a thousand times before but when you put any message in front of someone it takes five to 15 times before they can remember it. And that's why people pay for billboards. They pay for ads and everything like that, because it's messaging has to be repeatedly beaten into you sort of more or less so you can receive it and keep it. So if it's repetitive, it's going to get across. And if it's simple, easy to grasp, it'll work. So that's one way to one strategy that I definitely employ all the time people i work with so repetitiveness mm -hmm. and repetitiveness so that's one aspect guys the other that i want to share with you guys is more on the keeping it very simple all right so it kind of goes with the repetitiveness if you can repeat something it means it was simple enough for you to start it all right so this is what i mean um let's just even talk on a personal tip in terms of the personal side of your life right so there's if you want to accomplish anything whether it's in your brand or in your business it's about keeping things extremely simple so you can replicate them every single day. You can pick back up and you can keep doing it. So a good example of this is um, it could be within your diet. It could be within your finances. It can be in whatever it is that you're currently working on. But I was sharing some advice that I learned and picked up along the way with Medine. And uh, and I implemented it two years ago. So like I think on Tuesday, somebody came on. They're like, yo, did you lose weight? And I was like, I did. Because my old videos, if you guys watch them, I lost a lot of, uh, I, I weighed a, a good amount. But um, the one thing I changed, it wasn't anything complicated. Like when, when you go to a dietitian or you go to somebody and they tell you, hey, you should be checking your macros and your intakes on your, on your micro calories and all these other really complicated things, you feel like you need to study up on it and you need to like do all this fancy stuff, like eat certain foods and not eat other, other foods. And it gets really complicated when you're trying to do that method. And then shout out to Alex Harmozy. I watched one of his podcasts a few years ago, about two years ago. And he actually just said, hey, all it takes for you to actually be disciplined and losing weight is less intake of calories, more ex, more uh, out, output of your, of your physical activity, meaning less calorie intake, higher calorie out, like being, being, uh, being used, whether it's exercise, walking. You got to have a deficit in calories in order for you to lose weight. 
So when I heard that and he said, hey, it doesn't matter what you eat. If you just start there, you're going to lose weight. And I was like, interesting, because I had tried, you know, the paleo method. I had tried all kinds of different different ways to lose weight and they would stay off for like, a good, you know, I'd lose the weight pretty quickly, but then I'd gain it again. So it was like, it was like, how do I get into the strategy of like less intake, more output and activity? And it started with a very simple process, right? And this is a process that you're going to be taking throughout your brand. And if you're just joining us, Medine's going to be diving into how you can apply this to your brand and into your business. But into the personal side, a really easy way of doing it was essentially just, you know, making sure like, where are you at? What is your baseline right now? What is your baseline of what you're eating? Logging it so you're aware of how many calories you're intaking because you don't know how many calories you're intaking unless you're logging them. And then you're going to start being surprised about how many calories you're being intake because things that you wouldn't normally think had a lot of calories, you'd be like, yo, I can't believe this has 800 calories. This is the same as a smash burger or mm -hmm. in and out burger. Or a lot of sugar, yeah. Or a lot of sugar. So, so if you just kind of keep on the calorie count, you're going to be good. You're going to know exactly where you're at. And then once you do that, you got your baseline of like, this is how many calories I intake. Now you're logging your, your exercises. How many calories are you actually exerting per day? And if you have that, that, that deficit of calories, you're going to lose weight. So when it comes to building a brand or doing anything, it's about keeping it extremely simple. And in the branding game, Medine, um, how can this be applied or what can people do to keep their brand super clear, very simple, and essentially allow them to start growing it? Well, first of all, shout out to you and Alex Hermosi for coming up with that because that blew my mind today because I have been researching to the ends of the earth on different intermittent, intermittent fasting, different, like you said, paleo, and I'm in the journey of losing weight myself. So this was really helpful because I, or I, got, I just downloaded the uh, Lose It app. So I'm tracking everything that I'm going to be putting in. You guys keep watching and then I want to work be like John here in a, in a month or two. So uh, I want to, I'm working on that myself. So yes, simplicity is definitely helping because I grasped it easier. So uh, in terms of how it affects your brand or how it works, simplicity works with your brand. This is something that I've discovered over the course of many years of working with a lot of different people is everyone has an idea that's fresh in their brain that they want to get out to the world through a t-shirt, through a hoodie, and they want to make sure that the hoodie look looks really good that the quality of the, the the joggers are there or you know a combination of the two and what i discovered was that the either the quality is always on point or their pricing never really was a problem because people would pay that amount of money but in terms of their messaging it always gets muddy it always like you get a little bit unclear and for those of you who don't know i'll back up for a second and and just kind of explain my background working with john over almost 15 years now in in terms of helping small businesses out back in the day when we were college kids or, you know, even all the way up through till now working together on our own brands and everything and meeting up with different people at the college and just in general and through FTGU, it's always taught me that the people run into the same problems. The, the brain is cluttered with all kinds of inspirations, ideas, and things that they want to you want to share with the world. And a lot, it's, really comes down to a process of elimination, just saying, okay, there's a lot of things that I want to say, but what's the most important thing that I want to say through my graphic design of my logo, through my color scheme, through my brand package, through the, the even the, the words that I use as my tagline, how my, my web domain is going to uh, come across. All those different items stack up to make what people perceive you as your brand. And if there's a lot of different ideas, I'll give you a example of what I'm talking about. It can get muddy. Uh, I was talking to someone who had a fishing uh, uh, brand that she wanted to do. I was like, this is fantastic. So she's out in Florida. She's killing it. And I'm like, okay, it was a really cool brand idea. But then she was like, but I also like, uh, you know, talking about um, uh, mental health. And I was like, okay, so we can we could probably work that in, but also I like women's empowerment. And I was like, all right, we can we could probably get a patina of that going here. What my point is is that as time went on, the different subjects you kept bringing up muddied up the main message of the branding. So the process of elimination, fishing, just stick to fishing because that's the strongest point. And then as time goes on, you can introduce new things to your audience, but keeping it simple in that sense in a process of elimination will be a great start. And then from there, once it's simplified, you can amplify it. So there's two steps, simplify, amplify. 
Once it's simplified, now you can spread it out to the masses, put advertising behind it, get it out to influencers, tell people to uh, want to buy. And you're going to get a better return on your investment because you know exactly what you're selling and you're selling it to people who want it and it's done. So keeping it simple in that sense is really helpful. No, most definitely, guys. So I think this also translates a lot of times when people are asking, how do you market? How can you get more eyeballs to your brand? How can you what kind of content should you make? A lot of times when you're marketing and you're and if you're just joining, we're, we're essentially covering how can you make your brand last? And part of it means having a strong brand message, right? That's like one key strategy. And we just were talking about how simple it, how you should be keeping it simple, right? Keeping everything that you're doing extremely simple for others to understand and for you to also hold yourself to doing a lot more every single day. The harder it is to do, the harder it is for you to do something, the harder it is for somebody else to understand it. So when it comes to creating content and when it comes to actually building up your marketing campaigns in your library and what you're going to be doing as a brand, you have to start with a very simple message. Medin, Medin just covered that. He talked about how simplicity is key. If you're doing fishing, you're doing mental health, you're doing women's empowerment, you're doing all this random stuff and you're cluttering your feeds, you're, cut, you're cluttering your email campaigns all with all of these different conversations, people aren't going to remember what it is that you do. So you have to keep it simple when it comes to your marketing and branding. And through keeping it simple, you're able to find the content pieces that are going to amplify that message. So in this example, you guys can literally, if you want, drop your brand below. Drop a little bit about what you guys are working on. Tell us a, a subject within your market. If it's uh, you're doing bicycle wear, if you're doing mountain biking, you're doing fishing, Give us some insight on your brand right now, and we'll actually have some real examples that we can share with you. And, and if you want to give us a little bit of insight about what's working for your brand, do that as well. And we'll be able to provide a little bit more, more details here than us just talking on a, on, a, on, a, you know, on a surface level. But to get back to the fishing example, if you want to create content around fishing, right, but then you're also talking about women's empowerment and all these different areas, it's going to be really complicated for you to actually grow a following. Because the person that might love fishing and would buy your product may not be turned on by the other subjects you're also talking about. And I feel that today, more than ever, multiple people want to talk about all these different things. And then nobody really understands what it is that you're about. But the brands that are standing out in the market, I guarantee you, are mainly talking about one subject. So I want you guys to go to your favorite brands right now and start seeing, hey, this is the common theme and message that this brand is giving out. And this is the reason why I do business with them. This is the reason why I buy a product with, from them. And you can see the brands or products that are out there that are talking about all kinds of random stuff. You may not even remember them. You may have forgotten their name completely. So keep your branding, your messaging extremely clear. It'll give you ideas for branding and marketing, for creating content on social media, for creating graphic posts, for, for ads, for making your newsletters. Everything comes together once you kind of simplify your messaging and your overall branding. You know, like it just you just reminded me of something when you just said that, because I have a friend of mine and she has a brand uh, where she makes teas and, and she put me onto the world of tea with, you know, uh, the different healing effects that it has and the combinations you can use. And and now I love it. But she started out and it's called high tech healing. You can check out her website. She has all kinds of cool teas and everything going on. And I was like, okay, great. She has packages for digestion, for health and all that. And of course, she has merch that she sells along with it that I'm helping her make. But I kind of asked her, okay, what kind of content do you want to put out there? She says, okay, well, let's talk about what you can get from our digestive pa digestive pack, um, from, you know, if you're dealing with headaches, if you're dealing with insomnia. She has teas for everything. But I said, okay, well, kind of let's, let's reboot here and think about this. There's tons of companies out there that sell tea. What if we brand you, the person, and make it memorable? Because you're constantly talking about tea and your name of your brand is High Tech Healing, which is fantastic because uh, it has strong messaging to her inner circle. The people who know about what she, she worked at Herbally Grounded for years. So all of her friends knew about the power of tea and how natural healing, what, what we consider God's natural uh, herbs and teas and spices heal our body. So that's high tech in the sense that it's natural and it's able to fix you. So that's the message of high tech healing. I told her, okay, that's good. It's going to be very niche though. And a lot of people won't get it. 
you know, it was very uh, sounds very complicated. It was, it was a little bit <laughs> high tech you know? healing. Yeah, it's like, am I going to inject myself with some with yeah. some pills, like or? a chip? Or <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I honestly didn't know, and I didn't mean any offense by it, but I kind of had her break it down over and over. We spent about four hours. And she, she just spent four hours, four hours, four hours. And we spent this guy has a lot of patience with people. <laughs> well, I like doing it. I don't know if, like if you don't like it, you're like, shut up, lady. But after you after we kind of broke everything down, I was like, you know what? what? You're always talking nah. about tea. What if we called you the tea lady? And if everywhere you went on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, we just call you the tea lady. And when people when you show up at places, you put the tea lady above your head and everybody know that's the lady with tea. So. Let's do this. So she went with it. And now she's at she's doing well at the farmers markets. People recognize her. She's starting to make a splash on social media, but it's a lot simpler than high tech healing. It's, yeah, high tech. That's, that's complex. Yeah, bro. it's complex, but she's going to keep it. But yeah, you understand yeah, this. Yeah. Th that's what we mean by longevity. That's really what it is. So you you made it from high tech healing to um, the tea lady. The tea lady. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Dude, you had a really good one. So he also, and I don't think she ever used it. So I think we could, uh, I think we can, we can, we can publicize yeah. it. So we had this accountant come in and she wanted to do a branding session. And she was like, yo, let's, I heard about Medina, heard about what you guys do. And we're like, well, you know what? She's a friend of a friend. Let's just sit down and come up with a concept for her. So again, super complex. I don't even remember what her business name was. We're not okay. going to call her out about it. But Medina came up with your dollars doctor. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, I remember, remember that? that. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. About you came up with that. Well, I came up with that because she was a woman who does finance and accounting for people who are very wealthy. So obviously she could do your taxes and all that, but for people who have a lot of money, estate planning and all that. Estate planning, so she knows how to put everything together. And then once once I heard about that, I was like, okay. She takes the time to listen to you and finds out what your problems are, finds out how you can have better long-term health, short-term health, intermediate in terms of your finances. I was like, you sound like a doctor. So I was like, let's call you your dollar's doctor. I thought it was the most genius thing in the world. She hated it. She did not like it at all. <laughs> And it's okay. I mean, sometimes you're not going to hit on all of them. But yeah, that, that's what I was like. Hey, your dollar's doctor. I could imagine on like I'm cruising down. Yeah, I'm on the freeway coming home from work. And then like I'm listening to the radio and they're like, your dollar's doctor. You know, like it comes on the radio. You're like, oh, yeah. You're, and then jingle could come with. So my mind starts firing different a lot of ways. But simplicity, you know, so yeah. And you're not going to like everything that I say or you say, but. Yeah, definitely shoot for that at least. Try to find something that's memorable. Definitely. And it's got to be, guys, if you're watching this and if you're starting up a brand, if you already have an existing brand, then make sure you guys hit the comments down below because we're going to yes. be taking some questions here. So we got uh, we got Don, Don Gang. Don Gang, I hope I didn't mess that up. Hello, how are you, my man? Appreciate you. Um, I saw a question here. Okay, so he asked, what do you think about marketing 5.0? And this was honestly the first time I heard of it. So thank you for putting me on. Have you heard of Market 5.0? Well, you're educating me. Dude, this is like high-tech healing right here. Yeah, I, I, I never heard of it. You, but it's actually kind of cool. So My so next what, stream, we'll have it all. Yeah, yeah. We're, I'm going to actually get the book. So Marketing 5.0 is a book, and it was through the creator of the four Ps of marketing. Oh, really? So that's kind of cool, yeah. Well, I just the four Ps of marketing is like it's fundamental. Like Every college you go to. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we're definitely going to be looking into that. Thanks for putting us on on that. So to be honest, the very first time I hear it is right now when it comes to marketing 5.0. Same here. So I think from the very brief little Google search I did is just embedding more technology into the customer standpoint. So mm -hmm. it's not just about product, price, place, or promotion, but you're also evolving it to be more of a multi-touch point on social media. So I'm actually really excited to learn about it. Yeah. You know, pretty sure it's a lot of the things that... A lot of people are currently doing, but now he's coined it and he maybe put a process together for it. So if you guys haven't heard of it, uh, just know that the book itself is written by an author that's pretty legit. So definitely consider reading it and uh, let's discuss it. So if you guys are joining us and you're not a part of our community, we link the community app right in the chat. Mm -hmm. So you guys can actually go through it, request to join. This is where we're also going to be taking your guys' questions throughout the week. We have a lot of people in there posting their statuses, yes. what they're doing. I think one of the really cool parts about it is that people are building relationships with one another within each other's states or cities. Mm -hmm. So there's like meetups happening, a lot of conversations happening within brands. April 19th, we're having a meetup here in Las Vegas, by the way. April 19th next week. So we got these types of events as well happening in uh, different print shops located in the city. So we're just we're all about bringing people together 
for you guys to learn about one another, but then for you also to just build your brand. And sometimes it's just about the network we can build within your own communities yeah. and the services that you can offer for others and the expertise that you can trade value for. Absolutely. So definitely take advantage of joining the community. It's going to be linked in the chat and we'll put it up on the replay as well. You know, that's something I wanted to say is in terms of making your brand last, you got to have a, a amen corner. That's what my, my our professor used to call it and still does. You got to have a group of people who are just rallying behind you. They say that you have uh, people who either bet on the horse or they bet on the jockey. What that means is do they bet on the business being the horse or do they bet on or the idea or the brand or do they bet on the jockey, meaning the person? A lot of times people bet on the person behind the brand of whatever it could be. And, you know, they you've obviously heard people buy you. They don't buy your products. Well, what I've learned is if you have a support system that believes in you as much, if not even more than sometimes you believe in yourself, it's crucial. So that's it's kind of like it's a plug, obviously, for our community, because everyone in there is chiming in and, hey, I'm from South Carolina. Hey, I'm from Florida. I got this brand idea. I'm, I'm working on this and that. Sometimes when you're just around other creative people, you don't feel kind of cut off and sort of on an island and you could trade ideas and say, OK, well, I want to make this or that because that's what we did back in college. You know, when I was hanging out with John at 19 years old, you know, when I was asking him, like, hey, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to start a backpack business. I was like, are you crazy like you, you know you're gonna start with something and compete with jansport little did i know i show up to this guy's house like a couple weeks later and he has like tons of jansport backpacks sitting in his living room that are all chopped up with him and his brother and i'm like this guy's nuts i'm like i like it i want to roll with this i want to be a part of this because you're actually doing something you know so like-minded people help you stay keep your brand on course because you can just Get, get lost in the mix of work and bills and forget about what you want you set out to do but if other people are holding you accountable it's a different vibe most definitely and i think sometimes people love to collaborate just even creatively right so even if somebody may not be rocking with you a hundred percent of the time doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to True. collaborate with you on yeah. certain projects or things that you need done so oftentimes it's the number one question that we get is like you know i'm on a budget how can i market i don't really have that money to to market like how can i do what what I'm supposed to do and everything that you're telling me to do. Um, a lot of it is going to be for trades of services when you're just getting started, guys. It's you're not going to have a big marketing budget to pay, you know, five hundred to a thousand dollars for a model. You're not going to have money for a photographer. You may not even have a location. So you have to pull together resources. And a lot of times that means pulling together talent that's willing to collaborate with you on certain projects and you lending a helping hand when they also need something supportive, be supportive. And, and that, and that, and that helping hand may not even be like right immediate. It might actually take years from now. Like a good example that I have is like, uh, when we were starting, you know, I hit up, uh, we, we were, uh, we were right out of college. We had a lot of friends in high school, especially like on the East side of Vegas and, uh, my boy, Josh, we had like a lot of skaters, Steezy. Steezy Weaver. We had all these guys who are now like incredible, incredible social media influencers in their own space. And now that we collaborate, people are like, yo, how do you know this guy? It's like, dude, he helped me market the very first product we ever made. Yeah. And because of that, like I want to help him. So whatever I can give him, whatever insight, whatever connections, resources, photos, videos, like I want to help him because he championed what I was doing. 12 14 years ago like it's crazy yeah. it's, it's never going to be repaid immediately but by you building something and starting to build this community you guys are literally going to be family for like forever yeah. like i think to this day we still collaborate with a lot of people that we started with yeah I'm, you now you got me going down memory lane because we got zach Cyrone. we got we got uh we got a steezy we got there's so many people i could think of that were artists you know, a couple of New York fashion runways, fashion. Run, yeah, yeah, we did like events Tuesday blend first Friday, West Side Wednesday. Uh, we did the magic convention twice a year at the convention center. We did, you know, of course, tons of things at the school at people's barbershops. We just show up places and everybody had their thing. It was that same group of people that helped. Who, who? Yeah, oh, when was that? <laughs> what are you talking about? It at the park. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Well, our producer has decided to chime in <laughs> with some nonsense. No, but uh, we had we had tons of people supporting us back then. And looking back at just as we're going through this, talking about making your brand last, all those people are really close with us today. Like they 
and they're all doing their own thing in their own right. You know, like it's super exciting to see because now it's like they're all, you know, they're they're all pillars within their own you know their own communities yeah. you know whether it's biking or you know Tripping, sports whatever. fashion whatever it's incredible guys so honestly starting here is is really the foundation so make sure you guys join the community drop your questions if you guys are joining us live what we're actually doing right now is we're talking about the one strategy to make your brand last and we started this video off by sharing how important it is for you to keep being simple Keep things simple within your brand, your messaging, and also keep things simple in your own life. Whatever it is that you want to attack, whatever it is that you want to accomplish, this, this exercise, whether you do it for your brand or you do it for your personal life, is literally translatable to anything that you're about to take on. So one of the things we were talking about is simplicity and messaging. Yeah. Can you give us another example of a brand that's doing good messaging? Oh, okay. Um, I got a few. Uh, well, I mean, of course, you know, let's go with big macro. You talking about in and out, right? It's like you show up in in and out is three, four things on the menu item. You're going to buy that thing and it's going to be the cheeseburger, the hamburger, the blah, blah, blah. You got, um, you got, let's see, uh, um, Brema, he does a really good job of, uh, sort of keeping his, his clothing brand and his, his products very distilled. So every time he drops, people wait for it because he puts so much of himself in it and he and he brings it out to the world in such a unique way. Just screen printing, making shirts, but people love it. And his story is amazing. And I hope he recovers quickly, by the way. He just found out he had yeah, been diagnosed cancer. with cancer. Yeah, yeah. So uh, praying, for for him, him. praying for Brema. Brema's an awesome dude. Haven't met him yet. I had conversations with him over Instagram, but great dude. Awesome guy. Awesome Incredible guy. Creative. So, so yeah, those are some ones that I could think of other ones too. Of course, you know, you know, you got your, your big ones like, uh, Nike and the rest of them who really do a good job of keeping it very simple. Just do it. And it's lasted for, I don't know how many years, just the eighties. Yeah. So the, the, you, you, you think about those things and there's a lot that comes to mind, but through that moniker of something very simple, they throw a lot at you. Hoodies, jackets, t-shirts, shoes, you know, different brand ambassadors, blah, blah, blah. But it's under that same messaging that they, they've kept over a course of, you know, years. So I also want to give a huge shout out to the man uh, behind Run Slow AF. Oh, yeah, that's right. Run Slow AF. Brandon, can you pull up uh, the website Run Slow AF on the, on the thing? Let's, let's, Where's he at on his subscriber list now? Let's, let's test his uh, producing skills. Oh, oh my gosh. Producer. <laughs> Mr. Producer. <laughs> Producer. All right. Uh, uh, Alvaro. Alvaro. Okay. So. Okay. All right, Alvaro. If you're watching this, your device isn't connected, so we can't connect you. But uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try to share a website. Yeah. This is the first oh, time okay. we share a website. Right. So. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, can you come in the shot real quick? Just, just say hi to everybody. Say hi. This is our producer. He's awesome. Come you, on, say hi, Brandon. You, you can take a seat. No, you can tell people a little bit about. Yeah, it. yeah, just, just. just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just <laughs> Brandon, just tell, just, just come on, say hi real quick. <laughs> come on, everybody, come over here, stand right here. <laughs> they can't see you. They can't see you. Come on. This is our number one. They can't see you, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, bend down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Say. Say, hey, this is the guy right here. We love Brandon. He's awesome. He's our producer. And uh, we're, we're growing this thing. So Slow AF, run Slow AF. He has a, a following, I think, twenty to 25,000 people on Mighty Networks on his own platform. And everyone on there is heavy set and they love to run and they run slow. And so his messaging is very simple. It's like, hey, doesn't matter what size you are. Doesn't matter where you're at in life. Get your butt up. Sign up for that 5K, sign up for that uh, half marathon and get out there and run or walk. And so uh, just to kind of like make sure we're all wrapped back in on what we originally were saying, how do you make your brand one strategy to make your brand last? And what you're doing here is essentially keeping your message simple so it does last. So it doesn't get watered down and people forget you. Run Slow AF is about as, is about as simple as you can get. This is some of the products that he has available on his site. So camo, you know, the turtle is always iconic for him. He's made that his own branding and everyone knows as soon as they see the turtle, they know it's their, their run club. And so he's made it 
you, you know, an international brand now, I believe. He's been on the New York Times. He's been on Good Morning America. And he's done a successful job staying in his lane. You know, so this is what I mean when I say simplicity is that you know what you're getting when you show up and you know what you get when you're leaving. And generally speaking, it's good to have, uh, you know, maybe some sense of, mis you know, mystical, you know, mystery to what you're doing or some sense of, uh, uh, you know, whimsical aspect of what you're doing. But try your best to do what Slow AF is doing. And that is to hit people, punch people in the face with your messaging so they understand exactly what you're trying to bring to the world. And when they get it, they got it. They'll keep it and then they'll keep coming back to you for more, ordering more shirts, signing up for more things, you know, being a part of your subscriber list, whatever you like. So branding always comes down to simplicity to keep it lasting longer. Yes, guys, the simpler you can make it, the, the longer it's going to last. A lot of times we get that. I get that question all the time. That's the reason why we created this this live stream, one strategy to make your brand last. And if you're just joining us, we're we're diving into the tips that you need to keep things simple and keep things growing. And like Run Slow AF, you know, I don't know how many of you guys know this, the founding story of Nike, but Nike essentially started with just a running sneaker. They wanted to be the track shoe and they just wanted to master that. They, they didn't think about mastering basketball or anything like that. They literally started with runners and the coach that joined was like one of the professional uh, elite coaches in the in, in the track industry of, of his time, of his era. And he's the one that actually designed it with the waffle maker. So he designed the soul. And the whole story of it was it was four runners. And, uh, and then the Just Do It moniker came afterwards. But for the most part, they stuck to running to begin with. And like slow, uh, slow AF Run Club, you know, Slow AF can start with running and eventually he can expand. But for now, he's focused, laser focused on making sure that his message gets across. And because of that, media outlets, book deals, social following, people that understand what he's doing are joining the movement. And that's really how you're gonna be building a brand that lasts. And for us, you guys are seeing it in real time. You guys are literally witnessing what we're working on in real time because you know, in the recent video I shared uh, us, uh, us at a trade show, like for, oh, for Street ASD, Cracker. yes. So we're showing you guys behind the scenes of what we're doing to build out this community and movement. And if you're printing from home and if you want to compete with the print shops or if you not even necessarily compete with print shops, you just want to have better margins and be able to build your brand and take control of what of what your finances and your operations look like. That's what Street Crafter is all about. We built it for you to be able to create quality products from home. You can start with an iron or you can expand to a heat press and make professional quality products. You can resell for your own brand. You can sell um, you can sell to other small businesses and make their merch. The possibilities are endless. But our whole entire goal with creating this business was essentially to make sure that you guys had exactly what you need to build a brand from home. And that's what we call Street Crafter. And the whole message behind Street Crafter is that, you know, it is for the people that are building quality products, um, streetwear products. You guys aren't just building little crafty things that are cute. You're building something that's made for others. And that's that's the whole messaging and meaning behind the behind the brand Street Crafter. We got some more questions. Too. All right. Cool. Let's do it. What do we got? What do we got? So Tony, Tony, uh, Tony Tone, 76. What, perm what permits or licenses do I need before I start my clothing line business? Trademark. Okay, so he's got uh, uh so he's got a couple. So Tony, so Tone Tony 76. Um, what stuff do I need to begin a clothing line? I'm in San Bernardino. Do I need to get a trademark? Okay, so when it comes to California, the basics of starting your brand and legitimizing it, guys, is essentially making sure that you're separate, that you're opening up a bank account that's gonna house your your money for that business right if you start there you can either establish it as a sole proprietor which means that you're just a person running the business under your own name or you can establish an entity like an llc and move the business liability to a company and either way that company will have its own bank account so however you guys want to proceed i have a video on my channel that really dives into this and it's um how to start a clothing brand with uh less than 50 dollars. i think i i published it about eight months ago and i really dove into the legal structure as well as the trademarks that you guys need but for the most part to start all you need is to have a bank account that's separate from your personal account that way when you file your taxes and when you do legitimize your business you have a paper trail of, of what expenses were incurred by the business you could pay the taxes owed on it and all that good stuff and again i'm not sharing any of this to be legal advice but I'm telling you, this is how people are starting it from the ground up. This is how how many of us started it from the ground up. Just open up a new bank account, 
get the trademarks. You want to get the trademarks once you know that you, that is a brand name you're going to go for because trademarks cost like 400, 500, 600 dollars if a lawyer's doing it for you, 250 to 300 if you do it on your own. But again, that's 300 bucks you could have used for product. Um, I would highly encourage you to register the domain names, register the websites before you go and spend money on trademarks. Because if you can't buy the website, then that trademark may not even be valid. So if you can't get any of the dot coms or the or the dot store or any of those, like then your branding may not really be there. And then second, can you get your social media accounts? Can you reserve good social media accounts for the brand name? So start there before spending a lot of money on legal work and then uh, launch it and doing it and doing it from home is the best way. So I see another question from Jose Avila and is was wondering how I put a design from paper to computer. Well, I actually did this just a couple of weeks ago with a, with a friend of mine, uh, a photo, grabbing a photo of it. And then from there, uploading it through uh, kind of either up just uploading it to Canva, if you have a Canva account. And then from there, you can kind of cut out the background or remove background that way. I mean, I'm talking about I'm level negative one when it comes to graphic artists. I mean, graphic design. I'm so, better now. Yeah, I'm better now. I'm better now because thanks to Canva. But I mean, I've done this before. So you just want to make sure you take a photo of it. Make sure it's clean. It's well lit. Then from there, it should be able to just crop the design, the crop the design out of the background, whether you did it on a table or your bed or wherever. And then from there, you should be able to just upload it to Canva, download the file, and then shoot it over to, you know, our websites for it to be printed. But that's one way you can do it. That's Is there another one. question? Or? Yeah, yeah. We got a couple questions. We got MT44 coming in. Guys, if you guys are just joining the live stream, make sure you guys drop your questions. We are just, we just finished talking. We just, this whole video is about how do you make a brand last? So we've been covering things in regards to how do you keep your message simple and how do you build a community around that? But then how do you create products? I think the next phase of it we need to talk about is design. And we're going to be diving into that in just a second. But if you're just joining, make sure you guys drop your brand questions because we're also doing a Q&A right here. So do that. And uh, we're going to be going on for a few so more. I got, I got one more that was from... You're starting your brand in Ethiopia. You have your brand in Ethiopia and you're sitting on inventory. I hate that hearing that. That's so I, I know that it's a it could be a pain because it's one of the biggest momentum killers is just seeing your product just sitting there. That uh, sometimes it just psychologically it messes with you. I remember we had a run of backpacks that we made. It was super high quality. Some of the best stuff that I had ever seen. John and his and his brother Caesar cooked it up out of Mexico brought it here and we wanted to sell out. We thought it was going to be the best thing ever. And the product was in the garage just sitting there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, as the marketing guy, I'm like, what the heck am I going to do with this? And you said that the Shopify bill is ticking up every month as well. And so th those are things that are just, like I said, momentum killers. You do not want that. That's why I'm a really big believer in show love to get love and move the product, get the people to know about it. So sometimes you got to take an L sell it at a loss you gotta take it out quick yeah quick right Don't hold on to it for years <laughs> no it's like no no definitely kill the dream <laughs> oh man it's the worst Is it? yeah <laughs> so so when we want you to be in the video yeah, yeah, yeah. you we want you to talk you know say, but now you just chime in he said take the streets out take it, it to the streets <laughs> Come here, say that to the camera. Yeah, yeah. Say, it. Say, it, say it to the people. Say you want to say it? No. <laughs> we'll we'll get him on. You got to sell it yourself. You got to go out there and sell it. No, but if you're in Ethiopia, obviously you're selling in the U.S., you got to take the, the, the loss. As soon as you think that you won't be able to actually move through it, you got to clear it out. You got to move it out. You got to mm -hmm. move it out of your life, out of your system, and then take that L and learn from it. You got to learn from it. You got to figure out what to do. Now, now I just want to say, to, 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 to piggyback on that point, Get rid of it, but don't throw it all in the no, trash. No, no, no. I'm but, not saying that. No, yeah. He said, <laughs> so what we do is what I would suggest is maximize exposure. So if you tell people, hey, I got this backpack, I need to get or this product, whatever it is that you're selling, t-shirts, merch, hoodies, give it to people, but then make sure that they post it. Give it to an influencer. Give it to somebody who has 50K followers or something like that. You got to be able to at least just let go of that grip because you put money into it. So I know that feeling. I, I know it's not easy to do, but strategically start dropping it off and giving it to people and gifting it to people and 
use it as a quote unquote marketing expense. And if you do that, now you turn a loss into a win because you just created a lot of brand exposure. You got people to know about you. So I know there's a, there's a ton of followers in Ethiopia or even in stateside you can start working with to start bringing it out. And then from there, you never know. You might meet one customer who, who I, I, do, I see this all the time. People who are supporting a brand, they'll drop like a thousand bucks in like one go because they love what you're doing. They want to get behind you. Well, definitely. And another another approach to it, if you're like, well, now I got to pay for shipping fees and every single person it's going to cost me a lot to get rid of. Another approach that you can take, and this is really where we started this video, guys. It's like the simplicity of what your brand messaging is. I don't have any insight into what your brand is, so I'm just going to throw out a very random suggestion here. But if, you're, if your brand was all about, let's just say it's even about the youth and outdoor, maybe skateboard, right? Let me, just throwing it out there. Let's just say it's a skate brand. And you're sitting on inventory right now. And you're not sure how you're going to move it. Well, what if you found a way to reach out to an organization or a community group or a member that somebody that has a pretty good following and you're like, yo, I want to I want to sponsor the, the team with new new merch. And I want to and if you guys give me some photos and some videos, I'm willing to pay X right now. You literally moved all of the product to somebody that's actually going to be able to use it. They're going to want to they're going to photograph it. They're going to do marketing for you. And you can use those visuals on your website. Now you start to build a real brand. So again, it's all going to determine on what you're selling and who your market is. But if you don't want to reach out to all these rent, all these influencers, and you're like, you know what, I want to take an L and just move my product to one location, consider reaching out either to a nonprofit, a community youth group, somebody that's in your market. Again, this was just a general idea. Donate the products, give a little bit of money for them to give you some photography and video back, and you can turn that L into a win and establish and solidify yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to prevent that in the future, if you're selling from Ethiopia and you're selling in the U.S., you definitely want to be connected to print on demand or drop shippers here. You don't want to care. You don't want to pre pre book things until until you know that you got movement and you a lot got of demand and, the, and a demand. <clears throat> Never carry inventory in the states just because it's cheaper because you can make it in you know through Alibaba. You could drop ship it and because you got a good deal, you can stock it in the U.S. and ship it to customers for a profit. That rarely ever works. I'm telling you guys right now, a lot of these drop shipping hacks don't really work because unless you find that product that's very under known right you gotta you gotta hit it before the trend hits but anything that's already trending it's already a big market you're going to be competing on price and you're going to be sitting on a lot of inventory so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're that you're making sure that you're drop shipping and you're either printing on demand in order to start building a community before you start stocking up on inventory to sell to that community so those are my two pieces of advice take the l sooner than later because I've done this a couple times in the in the history of the of the last business. We sat into, you know, we dropped the release and it didn't sell, and I let it sit there, and it was draining on my mind to always see that L right there in the yeah. in the floor. So remove that from your life and move forward. Yeah, that is the most man. If that, there's one thing that you guys get from the stream from me, do not dwell on things that are that are losses in the business because you're going to take so many. Every twelve shots, eleven of them are going to fail. One of them is going to work. And that's about the batting average of entrepreneurship. So you got to get used to that quick. And then especially when it comes to clothes, everyone's fickle, everyone or any kind of a brand that you're starting. So make sure that you be able to stomach that and you can sustain it and keep it going. So, you know, if you got whatever you got to do to get back up, do it. But do not hold on to your losses. Move quickly. Well, it's definitely, guys. And if you guys are just joining, we're talking about a strategy to make your brand last. And we were just diving into earlier in the video, we talked about the simplicity of your messaging. So we had simplicity of 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 your brand messaging. Yes. We had simplicity of your brand's design or marketing, right? Yep. Marketing through the slow AF. So now uh, repetitiveness. Yeah. So now what is another aspect of keeping the simplicity oh. within a brand? Oh, another aspect of sim simplicity is is definitely making sure that OK, uh, when you create new iterations of the same thing, you're going to want you're going to have a um, kind of like a instinct to now I did this. So I want to be successful doing this or try something new. That's good. But make sure you temper it, meaning like when you're starting a brand or you're creating a product line, if something is working. Just keep doing it. That, that, that's what I mean is that do different variations of the same thing, switch it up. But if people keep buying, 
keep doing it because you're serving your customer. It's not the vice versa because they're the ones paying you. So if you, when, when it comes to the design of a product, a, a brand new, um, you know, capsule you might want to release or a flash drop, flash sale. When, when it comes to items like that, you want to stick to your core, you know, whatever your core theme was when you originally started. Don't make too much of a hard pivot because you may, it, it may be too much of a, a kind of a hard uh, jerk for people to react to and, and stay with you. You want to make sure you keep everyone on balance. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So when we had Revive, we were selling these backpacks to people and it was successful. But we wanted to move into something that had a high uh, margin, meaning high amount of profit we can make and something that we could sell pretty quickly and make some good money. So we got into baseball I mean, and into uh, hats. Uh, to hats, fitteds. And I was like, OK, cool. Let's let's see what we can do here. This I think this will make us a really good margin and it's a lot less work than the backpacks. So we started it. But, you know, we got a little creative. We wanted to have some fun with it. So our designs were very, you know, uh, I'd say kind of middle of the road, uh, slightly. It's very palatable. It's almost like a, uh, not Jansport. What was the other brand we would always talk about? We were against East Pack or something. East Pack. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. We had a whole thing. like. Yeah. But my point is, is that with our hats, we started putting spikes in them. Like my friends telling me, why are you wearing electrical tape on the lip of your hat? <laughs> you know, the, 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 yeah. Like what the heck is? And then we had like a floral, floral one. Yeah. That, hey, but the hats actually sold better. They, the they did. The hats so, sold better. So Could have done a pivot. We would have probably been better off. Yeah, with just doing hats. <laughs> but if the but 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 the designs that we were making them, you know, we we had to make sure we kept it close to what we it was lived the rush when we first started. Yeah. You know, that was our first. Yeah. So keeping it close to that that original bland, brand brand support. And I think and that's actually yeah. a really good. That was actually a really good example because uh, sometimes when you're doing something and it's not working and you try something completely new and it does work, you sometimes yeah. should follow where the money's going. Yes. Because in our case, in that example that Medina is saying, yes, we went, we were kind of selling a certain style of product and we had a certain message. And then we were like, Medina found these floral hats in the middle of downtown LA. This was <laughs> back in the day before anybody knew where this was. And we picked them out. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Medina mm -hmm. was like, yo, these are about to sell. We listed them. <laughs> I think we were buying them for with embroidery. It was like five fifty out the door, out the door, mm -hmm. shipped to 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 our location, and then we were selling them for thirty five, forty bucks. Yeah, we added these little uh, gems, these little uh, spikes, to the them. little holes that are on top of yeah. the hat. We just put a spike in we them. We added spikes to them, and then we made them fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, people bought them. <laughs> Yeah. The we that we're laughing about oh it. no we're not laughing yeah. it was just well i'm laughing but yeah uh, it was like people that, actually bought that's it that's how business should be run you should have a five dollar <laughs> beats does this all the time they're, yeah, they're ten dollar yeah. headphones that's and they sell for 300 <laughs> that's so we true laugh at anybody buying those <laughs> yeah but the, the 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 little screws 50 bucks and people paid for it. what those, those what those things like cost 15 cents for each, each hat but it was a little bit of so we're all ingenuity. Six dollars and twenty cents for those hats, and we're reselling them for fifty dollars. And at that point, should have been we should have gone all in on this headwear and like kept selling them and like re re upping because that would have mm -hmm. built the business. So if your current marketing or if your current products aren't selling, you should consider a pivot. It in that in that scenario, it was a pivot to like, hey, we know that we're targeting college students. We know that our market is high school to college students. They like streetwear. They like these types of products. So we released a product line that was literally nobody else was selling. Like mm. nobody else had at the time. So everybody was like, yo, I want that hat. How much is it? 50 bucks. Here it is. Yeah. It was an on-demand product before it hit the trends. <laughs> they could not get it fast enough no. out of our hands. <laughs> no, they like, 50 bucks, that's it? <laughs> yeah. And, and and you know what it was? I saw, and I'm going to get to this question right now. I saw on uh, Power 105, Chris Brown did an interview. And when he was on the interview, I saw the pattern of the flowers on his hat. And it was the exact same patterns that I saw in that store. And I was like, wait a minute. This is the hat that I saw Chris Brown wearing. I'm like, these are going to sell out. And I, I just knew it. And so maybe, you know, because, you know, it was, was on trend. trend. It, it was, was on trend. Right on that. It was right on money. And then, boom, that thing just took off. So, yeah. So whenever you're selling, whenever you're designing, whenever you're making it, if you know who your market is and you know that these people, that, that your market will buy something. Mm -hmm. And if your current designs aren't selling, then maybe you should switch the, the, the entire design up. Just switch it up. See what happens. If it still doesn't sell. Then you should consider doing something yeah you got it you got to switch it up uh it says how to create customer trust and loyalty i see some other questions yeah. too but well with that two things make sure 
you talk to your customers. I'm, I'm going through that now with all of our street crafter customers. If there's anybody who is missing an order and needs any help. I'm making sure to get to you. I email every day. Me and my support staff in Mexico, we're, we're jumping on the calls and making sure stuff is good. Um, the quality of your press start has to be up to snuff. So the quality and making sure you communicate, those two things build trust and, and loyalty. So if it's good and they know they can talk to you about it, it builds trust. Most definitely, guys. You want to keep that up. And that's why, uh, you know, Medin is 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 the G with what he does. He, <laughs> he talked to a girl for four hours about her brand. <laughs> okay, wait a second. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I don't want everybody to start thinking. Listen, we were already <laughs> hanging out, okay? And we got off on a tangent. You guys, you've done it before, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right, right. Four yeah. hours of branding. Branding session. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to get. What do they call that? Ratioed? Yeah. Ratioed? Yeah. So, All right, so Tony Tone. So, guys, if you guys are just joining, we're talking about the one strategy that will help you build your brand and that will make your brand last. Now, on the personal side, earlier in this video, if you missed it, I was talking about how to keep things very simple in whether it's your diet, your finances. This includes your brand, right? So in the diet side, uh, a tip I had was literally just count the calories. Make sure that you're burning more calories than you are um, – um, that you're burning more than you're intaking, and that will help you lose lose weight over the course of the next few years. It doesn't happen immediately, but you'll have that success. And just like that simple strategy, in your marketing, you should be doing you should be doing a lot more that gets clarity in your messaging and doing less of anything that's going to clutter it. Right. So we were talking about an example of somebody having a fishing brand. And within that fishing brand, they were also talking about mental health. They were talking about women's empowerment. They were talking about all kinds of other messages. So their profile was literally mental health, all this other stuff, and then fishing. So it was very scattered. And the whole goal of this call and the whole goal of this live stream is to help you guys understand that you have to keep it simple. You got to keep a simple message, simple designs very targeted to a specific audience that's going to adopt it and want to buy it. And we even showed a uh, huge shout out to the man uh, behind Run Slow AF, a good friend of mine. He's been on the New York Times. Let's pull up the website one more time if we can, if you guys missed it. But he has a very, very simple uh, message. Mm -hmm. It's Run Slow AF. So when you guys hear that right now, if you haven't already watched the uh, the screen recording, um, let me know what comes to mind immediately. Run slow AF. What comes to mind? Somebody. Yeah. Throw it in the chat. Throw it in the and, chat. And also, I just want to make sure I clarify something. When we say keep it simple, that doesn't mean easier. No. So simpler is harder to do. Like to create something as simple takes a lot of iterations. By the time we made the backpack, the bag, the basketball carrying bag that we got on Steve Harvey's Thunderdome in the middle of the NBA finals in 2016, huge highlight of our careers. Before that happened, we had 17 iterations of the same bag that we kept doing. Shout out to his brother, Caesar, who kept cutting those designs and re-sewing them and trying to make it fit just right around the basketball before we went up on a national stage and show people how to actually do it. So that final product that you saw on TV was months of development. Was months of development. It was very simple, but it took a lot of work to get there. It took four hours of a conversation to get there. <laughs> <laughs> but once you got it, it was every everyone understood it. So what, uh, don't think it's easier. It actually takes more work. It's refining. It's like Timbaland said when he did the beat for uh, Kanye West for Stronger. He mixed it down 14 times before he got to the beat that he wanted. So and that anybody who's who's a who a pro does their their stuff that way, they'll tell you the same thing. Simplicity is not easy to achieve. It's not easy to achieve, but it's definitely worth it. And like on screen, you see the run slow AF. I want to browse a couple of the other products. Like he has a very simple logo type, but now what he's doing is he's actually he's putting it on different color patterns, different product lines. This looks like a very simple brand, and this photography is very simple and straightforward as well. But he's got a community of over like 30,000 people that are running across the country with him. He has a book tour. He's got run clubs all over the city. This guy is killing it. And you see his site, and you're like, wow, I can't believe this is it. He's keeping it very simple. The message is at the forefront. People want to buy that message. And then, then, then they want to say, hey, can I buy it in this camo? Can I buy it in this? So he's showing people that it's a real product and people are buying his product. So yeah. sometimes it's just about condensing the message, make it super clear, super simple. And then with that, you can expand on the color palettes and the colorways. Because if you know somebody bought the other colorway, chances are they're going to want to buy this colorway yeah. too. He's not getting super creative with his, with his design though. It's still this run slow AF, run slow AF, uh, slow AF run club. So 
guys, simplicity is key. And we're if you're just joining us, we want to make sure that you guys drop a question in the chat. We're going to be going for another few minutes. We appreciate all of you guys who are tuning in live. We're going to be doing this. We're picking it back up again once a week on the long form, uh, you know, big screen type of setup. And then we're going to be doing a one on more short form reels. I enjoyed having more personal conversation with you guys as well. So I personally enjoy it. We're here to give you guys value. And sometimes that means being a part of a community that can also champion what you're doing. Because uh, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner is, uh, is a very long and lonely road. Yeah. And people will not understand what you're working on or why you're trying to do what you're trying to do. So we actually created a community that we linked in the chat of this live stream. It's community.ftgu app. It'll switch to the Street Crafter app soon. But for now, that's the link. I encourage you guys to join it because it's for free. 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 For free. It's for free. 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 Yeah. Yeah, So it's free, guys. So it's free. All you got to do is uh, go to that request to join we got a community of people that are located across the u.s and uh, it's really cool to have people meet up connect to learn from each other and then buy from each other so a lot of times you just need a support system and that's why we're building this out and for those of you guys wondering what is street crafter about street crafter is a business me and Medin started and we started it to help you guys all print from home yeah. we had the vision of can you build a product line customize your products, make your own products, and can we deliver quality supplies that allow you to, to do as good or better than most print-on-demand platforms out there? Yep. And that's our whole mission, and it's incredible to work with you guys. So you mind handing me that, that, that DTF right now? Okay. Yep. So, so I want to show you guys real quick. So this is a, a group, a very, um, very cool, uh, I think – EDM or there, there's some DJs. They're very people are gonna just totally roast me for this, but they're slander. They're, they're huge, and I've learned about them recently. So a friend of mine was like, "I love this group Slander. Can you make me a Slander T-shirt?" So this is how the designs actually come out. This is their logo, and we put it onto this sheet. And then once we just put this sheet onto the T-shirt, we just heat press it, peel off the paper. And then you have your logo on your shirt. It lasts for 50 washes. It can go on any kind of fabric. So this is what we sell at streetcrafter.com. It's called press art, widely known in the community, in the industry as direct to film. No, we're not stealing the direct to film name and trying to rebrand. I mean, we are coming direct, up with our own brand. Direct to film is like an inkjet printer. Yeah. So like, it's like, if you think about it, it's a printer inkjet direct yeah. to film printing. This is press art. You press on to your shirt. Press art. the art onto your shirt. Simple. Simple. So this is what we do. This is actually what we sell as well as some blanks that we have for high quality T-shirts, hoodies that we have on our site. So we have the website Street Crafter. We have the community Street Crafter, uh, the community where people can learn how to use all of our products and make cool stuff. But this is a whole creative smorgasbord of fun. And we want to invite you into our world. We want you to be joining our live streams on the community so you can see how to make cool stuff and know it's easier than you think. You might not have to go to the POD that you're thinking about in China, which I would advise against, mm -hmm. but uh, you might not have to go again uh, uh, to a print shop. You could and spend more money, but you can have full control of your process and keep your costs low because this is what we needed when we first started out making products back in 2011 and 12. And you can actually make some money. So this is a cool opportunity for everyone. This is a perfect time if you want to start your brand, streetcrafter.com. Yes, guys. We, we're showing it up on this. There's three easy steps. You upload your design. We send you the press art. You press onto the garment. Simple. Street Crafter. It's a, you, guys are, you, guys, you guys are literally, it's a, it's a community. It's an embodiment of who you are. It's, it's who you already are if you're crafting and doing it from home and building quality products. So we created this for our community. We... We launched it last year. It's been incredible to serve every single one of you guys. We work a lot behind the scenes to make sure that we deliver quality products. We do our best to make sure that we fix any issues. And uh, we're literally, we're, we're building this stuff out from the ground up, guys. So any other branding things that you guys are seeing, you're seeing it in real time. And uh, these are from lessons and, and things that we've learned over the years. We're applying it to our own businesses. And we're helping entrepreneurs and companies out there and brand owners like yourself um, 
replicate this process and do it for your own brand and business. So it's been incredible uh, working with every single one of you guys who've been a customer. We're, we're, we're releasing new product lines every, it seems like almost every month now. Yeah. So it's been uh, really exciting. And I also want to just chime in on some of the economics of this. So if you go to the site and purchase a sheet of press art, it's five foot by two foot for 70 bucks. And if you're a member, meaning you paid that membership of 300 bucks a year, each sheet's 35, but it's half the price. So I was, I, I mean, think about one sheet of all your designs, a couple of t-shirts, a hoodies, and then you could start your clothing line like that instead of thousands of bucks. So this is the time you're living in that, that we, I don't know if we had that opportunity. We didn't. We, we didn't. Definitely so did. you can literally make a hundred t-shirts for 40 bucks. Easy. Like in terms of prints. So if you had like logos, designs, you can literally fit up to a hundred designs on a sheet, depending on how big those designs are. But on average, you can fit around a hundred if you're working with little two inch pocket logos, some different sizes, you make up to a hundred t-shirt graphics that you could print on a hundred different t-shirts for around 40 bucks if you're a plug member. And I, I just thought about it. So I did uh, Cox Communications. They're, they're one of their local branches out here needed some polos. I was like, okay. I walked in and said, Hey, do you guys need some polos? Made their polos for them, made a couple grand off of using street crafter products and just heat pressing on the logo onto the chest on the polos. Who knew? You know, like it's it's that simple. Like I did the same thing for the police department. I've been actually doing this as a as making it's making me money. So we want to tell everybody through our community how you could do the same thing. Take orders, make money for yourself, for your brand, or just make other people's stuff and make some money that way. So keep your mind open, and then all of a sudden you'll be getting more money in your wallet. Most definitely, guys. It's not just your brand. You can print for other products like Medin mentioned. You can make almost anything you can imagine from these films. So if you join the community, we have a little training course in there that you guys can learn how to properly format art, all that good stuff, so you get the highest quality, and you can literally – be printing on demand so we uh in terms of in terms of any comments questions any anything that we can help you with we're going to be going on for like another minute or two i think yeah but for the most part guys we really enjoyed every single one of you guys coming onto this live stream join our free community it's uh, it's we linked it in the chat and i'm going to put it in the description make sure you guys check out streetcrafter.com yeah i'm gonna tell my mom we had 33 people on our live stream today yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> just guys, Thanks everybody it. for showing up. We appreciate we it. Appreciate every single one of you guys who joined. We're doing this weekly every Thursday, so make sure you guys join us next Thursday around the same time. We'll put it up in advance this next time, and uh, we look forward to having you guys on the call. So, in the community, you guys get an invite link that you can join us on the call. So, if you want to put your pretty face up on screen and we can have a real conversation, be incredible. So, we appreciate you guys. Hope you have an incredible weekend, and we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Oh. oh, no, that's no. it. Yeah. In the stream.